Despite the imperfections showing through in the ongoing restoration of the Opera House, board member Ralph Helmick shows us why the Opera House is in the record books. This door is uh, on the Guinness Book of Records. It's the tallest, narrowest door in the world. It's 17 feet high and 18 inches wide. Scenery for plays and traveling vaudeville shows just barely slipped through the opening. Another opera house rarity is the horseshoe-shaped balcony, fashioned after the Ford Theater where President Lincoln was assassinated. We're in the ballroom on the third floor, and it was built in 1893 by the Masons. They used this for their club meeting and for uh, serving meals and then go downstairs to the show in the auditorium. One of those downstairs shows was a performance by John Philip Sousa's enormously popular and just plain enormous band. They had to open the back doors and part of them had to sit outside in order to get them all on the stage. In the early stages, the Opera House booked every act from magicians to politicians. That is until the silent movies and then the talkies came to town. When they first started getting sound on movies, it was not on the film, it was on a record. And you had to turn, put your finger on here and speed it up, slow it down and synchronize it with the film. Patronage slowed down in the 1950s and the Opera House was nearly lost to the wrecking ball. Restoration began after Watcher's centennial celebration in 1965. The town went from centennial parades to a parade of big band and country stars marching across their stage. We're backstage at the Opera House, and it's a great feeling to perform on the stage where all of these people have been. Many of those involved with saving the Opera House have also performed there. Ralph is part of a local Grand old Opry-style group that puts on fundraising shows during the summer. Well, it's fun. You have a lot of fun preparing the shows, and it takes a lot of work.